hey, do you guys like the gin gimlet? Of course you like the gin gimlet, who doesn't? And since you do, we're gonna do three of them. My name's Leandro Demon Riva. This is the Educated Barfly. I'm subbed, are you? Let's get into making the cocktail. So the inspiration for today's video came from two comments that we got. One of them was just a request asking me to make an Eastern Standard cocktail from the Soho House, which I'm happy to do. And we are gonna be doing that today. And then the second one was from a guy named Juan Meza who asked if the East Side cocktail was related to the gin gimlet. And I'm just gonna answer this all right now. Yes, the East Side cocktail is related to the gin gimlet. And if you're asking yourself how this has anything to do with the Eastern Standard, the Eastern Standard is also related to the East Side. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to explore the entire lineage of these cocktails and talk about their history as we go. So the first cocktail we're doing today is called a South Side. Now, I wanna answer this question very definitely. The Gimlet and the and all of the subsequent cocktails are all related, the Gimlet was first. So initially in history, Gimlets were made with a lime cordial mixed with gin. Over time, uh, that changed to fresh lime juice, simple syrup, and gin. And that is what uh, a kind of a more modern gimlet would be these days. So the south side is basically just a gimlet with the addition of mint. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add, I don't know, a pinch of, I guess, eight to 10 leaves in the bottom of a tin here. And then we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and two ounces of gin. You can use any type of gin you'd like. I prefer the London, the London dry style, but literally any kind of gin will work in this cocktail. And then we're just gonna take a little muddler and what we're gonna do is we're just going to lightly press to release the oils, but not get those bitter vegetal flavors out of the mint, like so. All right, so we're gonna add ice to our tin, like so. Add this in, give it a nice hard shake. And I will say actually that someone else commented pretty recently asking whether or not sh hard shaking with mint in there, which does rip the mint up, then bruises the mint enough to give it like that vegetal flavor that I'm saying that we're trying to avoid. And I don't I don't think that it does. Honestly, I have not noticed that it, it imparts those bad flavors into it. It's a really good question. And you would think that it is, it's, it's definitely sensible, but I, I don't think that it actually does. And maybe do you even need to crush your poo and then slap it pants it if you're gonna bang it up with a... You know what? I, I like to do it just to make sure that we have like a nice bit of uh, of the oil expressed. But do you actually, you might not because you know, it, it does stand to reason that if it's being shaken in a tin, it's being bruised by the ice. And so therefore it should be releasing those oils. So I will just say that that's an optional step. I like to do it. And I don't know if it's just because I was trained that way or if it's like, you know, kind of sensible. But to me, it's just, I don't know. I'm a little OCD. I wanna make sure that the cocktail has a lot of like nice mint flavor. And to tell you the truth, I've never been steered wrong by my technique. So I continue to do it. Yes. Now, let me get it. That being said, let's give it a nice hard shake. Then we're just gonna give it a nice strainy poo in the pants. So it's nice that I like about the little double strain is you get all of the major mint pieces out of it. You still get a little smattering of mint in there, which is kind of nice. It make, makes it look really good. Let's give it a little sip. Yes, that is fantastic. It's bright and vibrant with lime flavor being balanced out by the simple syrup. And then you have the gin and the botanicals of the gin. It is both simple in its execution and yet very complex on the palate. And that's what has made it such a legendary cocktail. So the history of the South Side is pretty muddled. Nobody really knows where it came from. It is a classic cocktail. Some people say that it uh, originated in the South Side of Chicago during Prohibition. Some people say that a place called the Sportsman's Club in the Hamptons is a place where it was created. And then also the 21 Club in Manhattan has a claim to it as well, but nobody really knows where it came from. That being said, it's not that big of a jump to take a gimlet and put some mint in it. And I will say that this is how a lot of new cocktails are created. And when you add another flavor profile to something that already exists, you create something new. So there it is, the South Side. So the next gimlet variation that we're doing is called the East Side. And the East Side is basically the same as the South Side, except for the addition of some cucumber. So what we're gonna do first is grab our mint, Put it at the bottom of our tin, three slices of cucumber, same, one ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of our simple syrup, 
How much are we gonna do, Marius? Two ounces of gin, yes, two ounces of gin, here we go. Two ounces of gin, bam, like so. Muddle it lightly, trying to press the mint, then also sort of press the cucumber as well. But you wanna press the cucumber more than the mint, so I like to put the cucumber on top of the mint. Some ice into our tin, marry in our cocktail. Very nice, nice shake. Voila, into our glass like so. All right, let's give this guy a taste, shall we? Oh, man. Let's taste that side by side here. So, same flavor profiles last time, but you get a little of that cucumber in there and it makes it a little more refreshing. I just wanna see mainly mint and lime forward. But then you got this guy, can you really taste those two slices of cucumber? Oh yeah, you can definitely taste the cucumber in there. Absolutely, 100%. Why so the is thing that? is that a lot of people, this is the argument that a lot of people have, right? They're like, oh my God, like one's just a variation of the other one with added cucumber. Does that cucumber even matter? Does it make any difference? It, it does, it makes a world of difference. Sometimes those differences in cocktails are really subtle and sometimes they're not. In this particular drink though, the difference isn't really that subtle because Gin, like you're getting the botanicals of the gin, you're getting the lime. I don't wanna say it's like a super simple flavor profile, but it's easy to pick out the different flavors inside something like this. It's not a lot of like big flavors that are very, very complicated for your palate to discern. So yes, you can absolutely taste the difference in both of them. And this guy's a little bit more refreshing than this guy, but they're both fantastic. And are they related and similar? Of course they are. So the next cocktail we're doing is the Eastern Standard from Soho House. And if some of you guys don't know what Soho House is, it's a multinational private club for creative people. And if you think that you need to be a celebrity to get in, think again, because actually I've heard of a few celebrities being turned away from Soho House. They cultivate their membership. So you have to apply, uh, you pay a fee, and then you become a member. So they have some pretty fantastic bars in there, which brings us to our cocktail. So the Eastern Standard is basically just a reconstructed East Side. It is exactly the same ingredients as the East Side, but they played with the specs a little bit. I am going by the Difference Guide specs because when I was doing research on this cocktail, that is the specs that I found. And there are some very odd specs in the Difference Guide for this drink, but it is definitely respect from the original. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how it pairs up to the East Side that we just made. What are we gonna do first, Maris? Mint. Yes, pinch of mint. Three cucumber slices, just like in the last one. Now, here's where it gets a little odd. I'm gonna use my OXO jigger for this one because it calls for one third simple syrup, which is basically two, 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 two. It calls for one third simple syrup. This has a one third measure. That's also two teaspoons if you wanted to measure it that way. So we're gonna do that. One third simple syrup. Then it calls for five twelfths lime juice. So five twelfths lime juice to me is just like a scant half an ounce because six twelfths is a half, right? So. And what was it? Wait, that was the one that was 20 milliliters? So 20 milliliters is two thirds. Oh, what was the five twelfths? No, five twelfths is, I don't know what that is. Oh, I thought you were That's, I, You know what? You're going to have to figure that out when we edit this thing because I have no idea. But uh, five twelfths, I'm just going to do a scant half an ounce. A scant half an ounce. So scant means just under the line, a small half an ounce. And then we're gonna do one and two thirds of gin. So we do one, and then two of these little bad boys here. And I just realized, you know, like this is going to be a very small cocktail compared to the other ones. So I think I'm gonna have to use a different glass for it. But we're gonna give it a nice little muddle like we do. Because what, what's a half ounce is 15, right? All right, we're just gonna give it a nice shake. Metal shake. All right. Even this, I think, might be a little voluminous for this drink. It's a pretty tiny drink. You know, I got so caught up in all of our drink making that I forgot that to garnish an east side, I wanna just take like a baby leaf, give it a little smacky poo, and then throw it on top there, and that's your garnish right there. And I got so caught up in the cocktail making that. And you know what? I think this one's gonna get the same, but I wanna taste it first. All right, so here we go. Huh. 
So, you know, obviously it tastes pretty much the same as an Eastside, but honestly, it's like a little more subdued, less sweet. It's a lot less sweet, a lot more lime forward. And nice balance with the gin. So I prefer the East Side specs, but this is really not bad. And um, there you have it, guys, the Eastern Standard from Soho House. So if you like this channel, hit like, hit subscribe. I want to thank our patrons and YouTube members. These are the people that make this channel possible. Everything that we do is supported by you. And so we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. If you want to check us out on our website, theeducatedbarfly.com, you can see articles, merch, a virtual bottle program. And uh, I don't know, I already said hit like, hit subscribe. If you want to become a patron or a YouTube member, that would be really awesome, pretty easy to do. And then you would be part of the 1% club people that really support us. You would be a one percenter, as they say. And I will see you guys in another time. Oh, let's not forget the, uh, let's not forget the garnish, shall we? Bammo. There you go. And garnish.